All right, what's up everyone? It's Prerock again uh, with another MCAT question of the day, and today's one is about meiosis. So let's just get straight into it. It says, take a diploid cell in the G1 phase of the cell cycle with 2n equals 20. So you might have seen this nomenclature before. The 2 in front of the n just means two sets of chromosomes, and, and the 20 means there are 20 total chromosomes. So you have two sets of 20. If this cell undergoes meiosis 1, what will be the number of double-stranded DNA molecules in one of the nuclei of the resulting cells. So what I'm telling you right now, before we even look at the answer choices, is um, this is a hard question. Most of the questions I ask are already on the pretty difficult side, but this one especially is very, very challenging, I, I personally think. Um, and if you don't understand what this question is saying, I have an image here. So I told you that there's one cell right here, right? There's one cell and it's at 2n is equal to 20, and it's in the G1 phase of the cell cycle. And then I'm going to tell you it's going to go undergo meiosis 1. And when it undergoes meiosis 1, you get two resulting cells. And I want to know, in one of these cells, in one of these cells, what is the total number of double-stranded DNA molecules? How much double-stranded DNA is in one of these cells? So to go over this, what you're going to see is I have a really cool strategy. And I'm going to teach you this strategy. And any question that you think is really challenging or something that you might not be able to get, you might want to implement this strategy. So you'll see right here, I have the question copied and pasted. This is the question we were asked. But the question said 2n equals 20. 20 is a big number, right? It's something that you might not be used to dealing with. So I'm going to replace that 2n equals 20 into 2n equals 4. I'm going to answer this question for 2n equals 4, and then we'll extrapolate to 2n equals 20. Because when you start with something small like this, it makes it easier to end up at something big. So when you have a, when you have a cell that's 2n is equal to 4, let me show you what it's going to look like. It's going to look like you have one chromosome, two chromosome, and then I'm going to draw the other ones in green. Three chromosome and four chromosomes. So notice how the two basically represents how you have two copies of each chromosome, right? You have two copies of each chromosome. And the four represents that you have four total chromosomes, right? And so you'll see here, this is similar to what you might have seen before, but it's just easier because when you draw 2n equals 4, it's much easier than drawing 2n equals 20. So with that being said, let's move on now to what exactly are these things? What does it mean when I draw one of these? Because on this, on this thing, I drew four of them. I drew two red ones, right? Two red ones and two green ones. But what do they actually mean? So whenever you see these drawings, whether that be in textbooks or even just in uh, normal diagrams that your teacher draws, let me show you what they actually mean. Uh, first of all, this whole thing, this whole thing is the chromosome, right? And this thing in the middle, that usual big dot, and this dot right here, is the centromere. It's just the thing that's holding the whole thing together. Okay, but more importantly, when you see this diagram, it's actually a double-stranded DNA molecule. This is something that a lot of students don't get. It's a double-stranded DNA molecule, okay? And the centromere is just something in the middle that kind of holds that double-stranded DNA molecule together. It's more complicated than that, but for simplicity's sake, I want you to understand that this is what a chromosome is, okay? This is exactly how it's drawn, but it actually represents something way more complicated. So on the left is something you might see in the textbook, right? This is what might be detailed in the textbook, but this is actually what it means in reality. When you actually look at a chromosome, this is what it's actually going to look like, okay? So with that being said, let me just move on because I wanted to make sure you understood that. So now if we go back to our 2n equals 4 cell, remember this is how I drew it, right? On the left side of your screen is my 2n equals 4 cell in G1, right? In G1. So how many DNA molecules are in this? So remember, I told you that one of these things, right? One of these molecules on the left, one of these circular, uh, one of these single lines with a line through it is one double-stranded DNA molecule. So with that being said, how many DNA molecules are in this figure? Well, you have, right, you know, you have, you have one, two, three, right, three, and four, right? So you have actually four double-stranded DNA molecules here. But that's in the G1 phase. So now let's say you go through the S phase. What happens in the S phase of the cell cycle? One of the biggest things you want to remember that happens in the S phase of the cell cycle is DNA replication, right? DNA replicates. Remember DNA helicase, remember DNA polymerase, remember DNA um, gyrase, 
All of those things help with DNA replication, which is happening in the S phase. So assuming we go through the S phase successfully, um, assuming we go through, I'm going to redry this number three because it looks really bad. Okay. Assuming we go through the S phase successfully, what's going to happen is you're going to duplicate each of these chromosomes. And when you duplicate, you might have seen a drawing like this. It's happening everywhere. Almost all textbooks draw their duplicated chromosomes like this, right? And I'm going to tell you what they mean shortly. But when you duplicate a chromosome, it'll be something like this. And now, now you might be wondering, what the heck does this mean? What does this chromosome mean? Okay. This, first of all, is a duplicated, duplicated chromosome. Excuse my horrible penmanship, but this is a duplicated chromosome. But again, this means something totally different. Okay, when you actually look at it, this is what a duplicated chromosome looks like at the molecular scale. Because when you duplicate a chromosome, you replicate, um, you replicate itself, right? In this case, you have DNA replication. Uh, I'm using replication and duplication synonymously. When you duplicate a chromosome, you're creating two copies of it. So you'll see here you have two copies of the original chromosome. So even though it's still held together, this in the middle is still the centromere. That's still the centromere. But the point is you now have two copies because you've replicated the chromosome. With that being said, we have now just passed the S phase, right? We have now just passed the S phase. This is where we're at. And this is, again, Remember, this was for our original starting cell of 2n equals 4, right? We started with the cell that, that was 2n equals 4 in the G1 phase, okay? And this is where we're at. Now, let's say we undergo meiosis 1. In meiosis 1, you might remember something like this. This is actually metaphase 1 of meiosis 1. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to label the whole thing as meiosis 1. But you also know that in meiosis 1, right, you get a lot of things happening you have um, homologous chromosomes are pairing up, right? Homologous chromosomes pairing up uh, is basically the same thing as um, what I've shown you here. So this is, you know, homologous chromosome 1. Uh, that's a bad one, so let me redraw that. This is homologous chromosome 1, this is homologous chromosome 2, and they're both red, and so they'll pair up. And this is homologous chromosome 3, this is homologous chromosome 4, because they're both green, they'll pair up. And um, when they pair up, there's obviously some sort of crossing over that's happening, right? So that's also happening in prophase 1 of meiosis 1, but I'm not going to go into that. I just want to give you some details, you know, give you as much knowledge as you can possibly have. Um, but once they pair up, what's going to happen is they're going to separate, right? This is their anaphase 1 process, which is in meiosis 1. In anaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes separate. Homologs... Homologous chromosomes are also referred to as homologs, and they're going to separate. And when they separate, you know what's going, what you're what you're eventually going to get is one cell that has basically both of the original chromosomes, but just now in one copy, right? This is what you're going to get out. These are the products of meiosis one. These are the products, okay, of meiosis one. So now. If we go on to slide 8, um, I want to show you that this is what our one of our cells looks like after meiosis 1. I've already drawn them out, and this is what it looks like. And if you recall, look at this top right corner. If you recall, when you draw this out, remember I told you that this is actually two DNA molecules. Remember, um, I'm going to redraw this left one because it's really bad and I'm a horrible drawing person, but try again. Remember, this is what it looks like. It basically looks like these two things are stuck together by a centromere. Because remember, I told you, when, when you have something like this and you redraw it, it basically looks like this. So how many DNA molecules are in one of these? How many DNA molecules are in one of these? You have two DNA molecules, right? Because they're just you they're just bound together. So one of these guys is two DNA molecules. So with that being said, if we look at our cell after meiosis 1, we have one chromosome that looks exactly like this green one, right? We have one chromosome that looks exactly like this green one. And we also have one chromosome that's red, 
right? So I'm going to draw that red one out right here. And that red one is also going to have how many DNA molecules? Two DNA molecules, right? Because the, the red one is basically just red, but it basically is identical to the green. So if we add these all up together, how many total DNA molecules do we have? How many total DNA strands do we have? Two plus two is four, right? We have four total DNA strands. So with that being said, if we take a diploid cell, with we started, remember where we started? This part is where we started, okay? We took a cell that was 2n equals 4 uh, in G1, and how many DNA molecules will we have? We had 4 when we started. And then after meiosis 1, because we had replicated our chromosome and then separated those replicated chromosomes, how many DNA strands did we end with? We ended with 4 DNA strands. So now let's apply this to our original question. Our original question was actually at 2n equals 20. It was not 2n equals 4, but we just made it 2n equals 4 to make it easier. But let's go back now to 2n equals 20. If we now go back to 2n equals 20, remember, for a cell that was 2n equals 4, we had 4 DNA strands after meiosis 1. So now if we have a cell that's 2n equals 20, how many DNA strands will you do you think you're going to have after 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 meiosis 1. If a cell that was 2n equals 4 had 4 DNA strands after meiosis 1, how many DNA strands will a cell that was 2n equals 20 have? It's 20, right? It's a pattern, right? That's why we made it simple, so we can observe the pattern. And so with that, the answer to this question is actually 20. And again, it's a really hard question. If you followed all the way around, you learned a new strategy, you learned a lot about meiosis 1, you learned a lot about meiosis and crossing over. I really hope you found it helpful. I'll make a new question tomorrow. Uh, see you guys then, and if you liked it, subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. See you in the next one.